Hi guys, Luna here, and welcome back to yet another Starfield Guide video. I've done all you can do in Starfield and played just under 300 hours in the last three weeks making guides for the game, and in doing so, I've picked up a lot of useful information and wanted to share. For example, did you know you can change the weather by simply fast traveling to your location you're already at? So I have 80 tips which are useful for new players, and hopefully some for players who've spent longer in the game find useful as well. Let's jump into number one with some XP tips, and then move on to exploration. You can craft alien tea, which gives you 2% XP for 15 minutes, which is super useful to use before you finish quests. Sleeping will give you a 10% XP boost, which you get for 24 hours in game, and sleeping when you're married gives you a 15% XP boost. Sleeping will also remove status effects and heal your health. Shepherd's pie from the well will give you a 2% XP boost for 60 minutes, and you can stack XP so long as it's not the same kind of XP boost, so you can't eat 10 shepherd's pies, but alien tea, shepherd's pie, and sleeping can all stack together. Make sure you always check if you have an addiction. It can easily go unnoticed and reduce your carry weight and O2 recovery significantly. I played for a long time and didn't notice I had an addiction. One of the easiest legitimate XP methods is to travel to a level 75 system on very easy and land at either a coast or forest and you get loads of swarms of high level passive enemies. You can kill them for thousands of XP a minute, especially with your XP boosts. You also deal more damage if you fully survey them. If you find NPCs on a planet, such as civilian outposts, construction crews or science teams, they often have someone who's a vendor or provisioner. Some vendors will sell you notes, items which lead you to things on planets like gear, which is often legendary. Outposts are also worth searching as some of them contain illegal contraband. You can fast travel straight to a location you've previously been to without getting in your ship and taking off. You can also fast travel to other locations on a planet that you've previously been to by opening your scanner and simply hitting fast travel. You can sneak better if you unequip your spacesuit. You can pick up items and move them around like you could in the Elder Scrolls or Fallout by holding down the interact button on an object allowing you to place things or steal them more easily, and this also works if you punch items, as certain things can't be interacted with. You can rotate the objects as well if you want to place them easier. You can use your cutter on red doors where the hinges are facing you to destroy them, they usually have stuff hidden behind them. Your bedroom in the lodge has a safe with unlimited storage space. You can open any mannequin case without lockpicking it by putting your cursor in the small opening. You can fast travel to mission objectives by simply opening the main menu and hitting set course and then hold the travel button so you can get from New Atlantis to Neon in seconds, or any other mission location you're heading to. Unless, of course, you've never been there, in which case you can only fast travel to orbit. AMP will let you travel around planets much faster. When jumping from high, hit your boost just before landing to break your fall. If you're over encumbered, you won't lose any O2 when walking if you're aiming down sights. Jumping and then entering photo mode, you can then use the camera to see further into the distance. Chests that contain loot will have a green light on them to differentiate them from empty chests. You can hail just about any ship in Starfield, and you'll often be able to trade with them as well. Log. 
If you hear a beeping noise that gets faster and faster when you're on a planet, it means the environmental damage is about to give you an affliction. For example, if you're out in freezing rain or a sandstorm, you might hear the noise shortly before you get frostbite or lung damage. One of the best ways to earn money early in game is to play faction questlines, with the Crimson Fleet missions rewarding you with over 300,000 credits as a reward for their 10 missions. The Crimson Fleet faction missions is also where you will find the game's best weapon, the Revenant. Read all the books you come across, 10 of them will show you the location of snow globes. If you collect them all, you're rewarded with a secret armor with the best damage resistance of any of the armors in the game. Doing the Ryogen faction missions, one will give you a unique ability to control people, which will make them fight in combat for you. It's also handy to have a cutter on you when you're mining, but Heller's cutter you can find where you first start the game is particularly good against robots. You can fall from greater heights when you're in lower gravity planets. If you're over encumbered and you sprint, you eventually start to lose health, but it won't drop below 5%. Companions only disagree with your actions if they witness them. If you plan to murder someone, ask your companion to wait while you do it out of sight. What's happening, darling? All right, let's go. Oxygen depletion of your spacesuit is directly tied to how much your mass is, so carrying more stuff or landing on a planet with higher gravity will make your O2 drain faster. Before you go out exploring, always accept some constellation missions as you can passively complete them while exploring and earn extra XP and credits. You can use the battle simulator in the mast building after joining the UC Vanguard to level up piloting and other skills that require destroying enemy ships. Upgrade your jetpack skill and equip a skip pack. You can jetpack long enough for your O2 to recover, making traveling easier. The astrophysics perk can get you a ton of XP if you max rank it, and that is because you can sit in one solar system and scan all the other systems around you for thousands of XP. This method also gets you plenty of credits for scan info. You can take them to Vladimir after you meet him on the eye early in the story, and he will give you the most credits for your survey data. While it's fun to play with a companion, the isolation perk makes you very overpowered perfect for exploring dungeons on very hard, with up to 40% damage increase and 60% damage reduction. When lockpicking, if you get level 2 in lockpicking, the lockpicks will either be blue or white. The white means that there's no way that this configuration will fit into the current ring that you're trying to pick. This will rule out some of the options you have to make lockpicking easier. The gymnastics level 2 skill will give you a higher 0g speed, so you can move faster when you're in low gravity, and sprinting in 0g gives you a boost. Putting a point into stealth will allow you to make sneak attacks for high initial damage with your first shot when you're hidden. This allows you to kill high level enemies much easier. Weapon and armor damage resistance are determined by the quality, with the superior quality being best, so getting a legendary superior weapon for example will be the best kind you can find. Weapons scale with level so don't worry too much about farming good gear as it will become obsolete very quickly, especially in early game where you gain a lot of levels fast. It means even the common guns from the vendors can quickly deal more damage than your best legendary weapon you found earlier in the game, as it's now a much lower level. Unique weapons rarity is tied to level, they start as rare, but you get above level 60 and you can start to find them in epic and legendary, and that's the same for unique armors. So they're probably best not to collect them until you're much later in the game. Some weapons come with a perk called med theft that will make enemies drop more health packs. You can get legendaries easily by landing in a location on very hard, and once you get past the loading screens you can change to easy, and all the enemies will be easy, but the loot table will be set to very hard, making getting a legendary at the end of the dungeon much more likely. Some outfits have more than just looks, they have useful skills, elemental resistances, and one of the best ones, the UC Armoured Fatigues gives you a plus 25 armour resistance, as well as plus 5% reload speed. You can equip armors, weapons, and outfits to your companions. I'll be counting the minutes to our next chat. I miss talking to you 
you already. You also only need to give them one ammo for the weapon you can equip to them, and companions can also be equipped with grenades. You can hide your spacesuit when you're in settlements to make things more immersive. The best place to sell gear in-game is the Crimson Fleet Space Station The Key, because there's five vendors all next to each other and will also buy your stolen goods and contraband. You can also sell stolen ships here as well. If you're looking for somewhere else, you can sell contraband at the Den in the Wolf system without going through any scans. You can reset vendors if you wait 48 hours in local time in the game. You can sell your stolen goods to the Trade Authority vendor and then you can rebuy it from the buyback option for the same price and it will no longer be marked as stolen. You can board ships and steal them for profit when on planets. You can also board ships and not steal them but simply loot the captain's locker and cargo hold which usually contain lots of credits. You can also unlock the targeting perk to disable ships' engines and then board them and steal them while in space. Or you can interact with ships in space and many times there is an option to pirate them. Sometimes they will attack but sometimes they will just hand over all their cargo. You can access your ship's cargo within 200 meters to store stuff without having to walk to your ship and store it. It's even better in settlements like New Atlantis where you can access your ship's cargo from pretty much anywhere in the city, so you don't have to carry around things making you over encumbered. At stores, you can also buy and sell goods straight from your ship's cargo. Registering your stolen ship via the ship menu is cheaper than registering it at a shipyard or trader, that way you will get more money from your stolen ships when you sell them. The value of an item is not the same as its sell price. If you invest in the commerce skill, it will bring the two prices closer together though. Heal your ship in combat, you need to have ship parts in your ship's cargo hold in order to do it. If you're building a ship, go to the ship company's headquarters as they will sell more parts. If you build a landing pad at your outpost, you will be able to buy ship parts from all the different vendors. Ship parts are level locked, so stuff will unlock every 10 levels or so until you reach level 60. So it's impossible to get the best possible ship until you're a higher level. If you assign Vasco to your ship, he will exit the ship whenever you land and he will talk to you. And even better, Vasco doesn't take up a crew slot. If you've unlocked the piloting skill, you can hold down RB or the spacebar and this will use your ship's thrusters, cutting your engine, allowing you to turn your ship much quicker while keeping your original momentum. This makes combat a lot easier. You can rename your ship from the flight check screen in the ship builder at any time. You can also rename your weapons as well. Don't forget to do research as much as you can, all the game's best mods, healing and outpost building components are locked behind them. You can also use Synapse Alpha to make it a lot easier. The best place on a planet to build an outpost is where you land, as it's one of the only places that is flat enough for a good settlement. Ships will create a large flat square that you can build on. 
Outposts cannot be placed within 300 meters of a structure and can't be placed at all in the same instance as major towns and cities. Set up outposts on different planets to generate resources easily by building. You can link them so they're available wherever you are. From a crafting station menu, you can track items you need for particular crafting or research projects. Those items will be highlighted when you come across them in the world. Keep crafting materials in your ship's cargo and you can use them for materials to build stuff at your outposts and craft weapons and ammo mods at your workbenches without having them in your inventory. You can get materials without mining by blasting asteroids, also search rocks inside of caves. You can also loot raw materials if you come across cargo containers. You can build a bounty remover in your outpost as well as mission boards. So guys, there we have it. 80 of the best tips I could think of for Starfield for new players. I tried to avoid as many basic tips as I could, and hopefully there were some in there that you didn't know. If there was any tips that I didn't cover, make sure to leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more Starfield guides, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.